What if I told you that the green revolution we're seeing with the adoption of electric vehicles could be even greener? That very well may be the case as Power Nickel sets out to prove it can produce the world's first carbon neutral nickel mine in Quebec, a key metal in all EVs. To speak about this and a lot more in his company, we're joined with CEO Terry Lynch. Terry, welcome, a good man. Hey, Brendan. Great to see you again. And great to see you as well. Well, for those who may be new to your story, can you provide a quick overview of Power Nickel? And your plan to provide the world's first carbon neutral nickel as well. We'll get to your drill results that just came out yeah, as well, but yeah, I'd yeah, like to start yeah, sure. here if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, basically, uh, Power Nickel is developing the NISC project. It's located in uh, Namaska, Quebec, or just outside the town, about eight kilometers outside the town, uh, immediately beside the route north, uh, right across from Hydro, Quebec, which is an important part of the carbon neutral uh, part of the situation. It's a high grade nickel sulfide, uh, nickel PGM deposit and uh, near surface. Um, and uh, we're obviously getting some pretty exciting results. Uh, the, the carbon neutral uh, side of things is uh, it, we're very fortunate, you know, just by the nature of where we discovered this mine. Uh, we're in Quebec, so of course, in, indeed, Hydro Quebec is right there in our backyard, literally across the street. So, first and foremost, we're going to be able to power this mine with green electric uh, power, so uh, hydro power. So that's awesome. It's an ultramafic deposit, so ultramafic deposits naturally sequester CO two. There's ways you can enhance that. So that's another just again a lot. Uh, and then then there's three ways to make nickel. You can smelt it. You can hydrometallurgy, or there's a chemical metal vapor process. So the last one uh, is, is something that we're doing a feasibility study on with the leader in that field, uh, CVMR, who has 18 plants like this around the world. And their their plants are, they don't have any external effluent, air or water. And so it's the most uh, environmentally friendly way to produce nickel. And so uh, when you add those together, and then you add in that one of the things that we're going to do in our proposed project is we will build in a a recycling facility right out the start uh it'll cost us an extra you know 15 or 20 million and it will give us a whole new revenue stream but it's you know if you built this plant from scratch a recycling facility for batteries it'd be like 125 150 million so but building it into it an existing plant you can integrate many of the many of the uh, sort of features so they work uh you know simultaneously and uh, so all those co steps combined we believe we can make the world's first carbon neutral nickel mine and uh, that'll be obviously a great thing for the environment. It'll be a great thing for our clients because they can be able to represent to their clients that they're doing their thing, you know, in terms of participating in the uh, green revolution. And, uh, you know, we can do it all economically and, and people can make money in a, in a coherent way. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a big, uh, big undertaking, but a, a logical one that can be done with technologies that exist today and, and just so happens that we, you know, got the deposit to do it. Yeah, fantastic on that. I appreciate it for that overview. And it is important because people do want to see this this revolution into electrification of the world, but also understand that we need to do our part as well to mine more green. So it sounds like exactly what you're doing here. And you just closed the first tranche of your financing and released the first hole from your current drill program as well. This is just, you know, just in the last little bit here. What are you seeing from this first assay result from your first hole? Yeah, it was great. You know, there's really within the uh, the or the main ore body is called NISC Main. Within NISC Main, there's really I would say a west side and an east side. The west side is the most prolific, much higher grade. Uh, the east side is still productive and uh, important part of it. So we, we on the east side we stepped out 300 meters, uh, you know, south and uh, and uh, east, I guess, and uh, had a very you know great hole, like 19 and a half meters of effectively one percent nickel in Q. You take a whole boatload of those uh, results, and so so it gives us a, adds a, a bunch more resource. And uh, it it we we did that you know based on some technology we've been employing called ambient noise tomography. So it gave us a different visualization of the deposit. We initially thought that was going to be barren ground and not productive. And so you know based on the technology, our understanding was that no, in fact, it looks like it could be very promising, and, and it looks like it even extends further, but we stepped out 300 meters is not a small step out. Usually people are stepping out 50 meters, you know, 25 meters, a hundred meters, 300 is a bold play and, uh, and it came in big, you know, so that was possible because of our ability to sort of see the deposit in a different way. Thanks to the new technology. Yeah, I was going to bring that up, actually, because there's a significance behind this on the ambient noise uh, tomography that you were talking about there. Your Wildcat target provided bonanza-grade PGM, otherwise known as Platinum Group Metals. 
how did ant which is the ambient noise tomography how did this help you see it in a new light and and what is the significance behind finding this bonanza grade pgm so the the bonanza grade pgm was done with good old-fashioned geological sleuthing by our, our great team at uh internally and at geofactor they they, they identified uh, the ultramafic uh you know uh, offshoots at the surface we drilled the shallow hole and at 60 meters we found eight meters of almost one ounce of pgms so that was just you know great Great geologists doing their thing. Uh, now, going from there, we we, we did uh, do cover it with the ambient noise tomography this summer, and we could sort of see how this uh, continuation is going to go. And we'll have uh, several holes planned to follow that up. It's a winter target, so we won't be able to get to it before Christmas, but we'll certainly be drilling on it uh, first thing in the new year. And we're quite excited about what we're seeing there. Uh, and again, the uh, what the ambient noise tomography does is it measures the rock velocity. And everything in Earth has a velocity, uh, and it's measured in, 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 in you know beats per second, I guess. And and so, to the most part, uh, you know what we've found is you know our a mass of sulfide deposit is correlated to when we have an ultramafic deposit followed by which is about forty five hundred beats per second, and then it drops off to around four thousand or thirty eight hundred. That's when the mass of sulfides get deposited. So when, wherever we sort of see that situation, that signature, that's where we have productive drill holes. So uh, obviously what you say is, where do else do I see that, you know, in our in our land package? And so we're, we're quite lucky in that we, we've identified what we call, you know, not not, not a terribly uh, innovative ant one and ant two, <laughs> ambient noise topography one and two. I guess that's why we're in mining and not marketing. But, uh, you know, we, we, we see these as north and east of our current deposit. We think they'll be highly productive. We'll get at those in the in the uh, early in uh, the 24 drill season. And then we also see something similar on the west uh, to the uh, west of us. So um, pretty exciting. Uh, honestly, this technology is uh, is going to change mining and and uh, we're happy to be working with it and, and be one amongst the first to uh, take advantage of it. Yeah, very interesting indeed. I appreciate you going into detail there. Uh, in a recent news release, you stated that you believe NISC is the world's most undervalued project of its kind. What leads you to believe this? Yeah, it's a bold claim, uh, but you have to be bold these days because, you know, the market is uh, in such disarray. Uh, and the reason why we do that is it's just math. You know, we, we compare ourselves to other high grade nickel sulfide mines around the world. So people with one percent nickel sulfide or better uh, and that are considered to be commercial. OK, so these are deposits with with 43 101s, et cetera. So if you compare us with these high grade nickel sulfide deposits around the world, as we've done in our in our presentation, you can find on our website, you'll find that we're trading at between five to 10 percent of their value. Well, uh, we're about to release an updated 43 101. It'll be in our inaugural 43 101 sometime next week. And all of a sudden, this thing is going to be, you know, to the world, become a commercial uh, mine ready to be. Mm -hmm. And, as, and ultimately, this is just a start. We think it's going to be very big. So that's our whole positioning is to say, look at the math of what we've discovered. Uh, look at what we're about to produce. Compare that against all others. And you'll see that we're trading radically undervalued price per nickel per ton in the ground. And arguably, we're in the best location in the world to develop a mine. We're off the road in Quebec, uh, where they give you two for one to uh, money to explore. They give you two for one money to build. Uh, you got Hydro Quebec, Green Power. I mean, it doesn't get any better. You got the Cree, which are very pro business. Uh, so, you know, like all the boxes you look to tick on a mining project, we've got. So, uh, yeah, we are the most undervalued nickel mine uh, project in the world, and it's a hell of an investment opportunity. Yeah, and it's, it's very clear that CVMR sees this as well. Earlier this year, you had CVMR invest their own funds into completing the fe uh, feasibility study for your NISC project. Is it normal for an outside company to like a project so much that they're willing to basically fund their own work in order to obtain a meaningful position? And has there been discussions, uh, further discussions in collaborating any further with your company as well? Yeah, we're very excited to have CVMR, uh, you know, involved in partnering with us and, and working on the project. They um, they basically did this because they uh, they ultimately would like to do a joint venture with us, where they would basically uh, build and operate the mine and the refinery, uh, and we they would produce. They they're among the world's leading producers of uh, nickel powders, nickel nanopowders nickel wire, nickel uh, anodes, and precursors for the EV sector. So their biggest customers are, you know, U.S. Department of Defense and, you know, the 3D printing industry, et cetera, uh, and other, you know, obviously electric vehicle manufacturers. 
and they're running at a class one nickel. So in North America, we're pretty much the next guy up that hasn't been unallocated. So, uh, you know, we're, <clears throat> we'll soon have some break, uh, uh, benchmark studies out from CVMR as, re- as part of this, uh, you know, feasibility study. So we're looking forward to that. I think it, it's quite interesting when you approach the project by thinking as a finished products producer, as opposed to a concentrate producer. So one of the lessons we're learning is that when you produce a concentrate, you're probably leaving 20% to 25% of your nickel in the ground, just the nature of how this is done. Uh, in order to get the concentrates the way that the refiners like to have them. But if you're actually finishing the product off, you're probably going to take out, you know, a full 20% more of that. So and all of a sudden that becomes just drops right to your bottom line. That's one takeaway. Second takeaway is the money you get for finished products is two and a half, three times what you get for concentrate. So think about that. Costs are about the same. So so it's uh, it, it's it's been, you know, the, the money in nickel is in the refining. And uh, up until now, it's been impossible for miners to get there. But now I think there, there, there's pathways for us to get there. And we'll just see if that's what we end up doing at the end of the day. We, we always believe that it was important to maintain your free agency. So I'm not going to preclude, you know, Glencore or BHP or Wyler or somebody coming in there and giving us a whopping uh, multi-billion dollar check and, and taking us out. But, uh, you know, along the pathway, we're going to move and uh, uh, move ahead and assume that we're going to build this thing in, 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 in some way, shape or form with the partners that want to build it and, and uh, give our shareholders the maximum, uh, uh, you know, return on investment. Yeah, fantastic to hear. And speaking about return on, on investment here, lastly, you have quite a bit coming down the pipeline for Power Nickel. What should investors be excited about as you round off 2023 and soon head into the new year? You know what? The next six weeks will be the most impactful of our history. We've got, I would say, nothing but good to great news coming uh, every three or four days. So that's, again, bold, but it's just just the way things stacked up. And uh, so we'll be pounding this stuff. out. Obviously, the, the number one thing would be the 43101, which will, I think, validate the project. Uh, that should be out uh, sometime next week, we think. Um, and and then, then after that will be the benchmark studies from CVMR, which will show how robust that can be. And then there'll be uh, a report and a uh, great podcast that would encourage anybody interested in investing in, in, uh, in nickel and in, in power nickel to, to attend. And that will talk about the, the ambient noise tomography work that we've done and what we've seen with it, what we've learned with it, and where we see this, uh, the, how it impacts our exploration and potential in the future. So uh, nothing but, uh, and then of course, more assays. You know, so uh, so we've got really uh, you know, just a, a ton of great news coming. Terry, thank you so much for your time. For anybody who's looking to find out more information about your company, you can see the website that just comes down below there. Feel free to go there. There's much more of a deep dive. Go through your presentation, all of the above. Terry, always a pleasure. And thank you so much once again for your time. Thanks, Brendan. Have a great day. Cheers.